Hey, it's Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I wanted to give you a quick update before we get into this video. I did work on this desk some more after the video and decided that I needed to go away with the, the lighter section around the top. So as you see in the video, I'll be using uh, some lighter colors. I went ahead and switched to more of a, a green color, which is going to be Dixie Belle's Tree Frog Green. And then I went back within the navy and shaded and made it a little darker. I thought I'd let you know that. So as you see the video, the techniques are all just about the same, but I did, did, I did change the colors. Towards the end of the video, I show some finished pictures that you can see, and uh, you'll know a little bit more about how the finished looks gonna be. So stay tuned to the end of the video. Thanks again for watching, and let's get going. Hello there, this is Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. Excited to uh, start another project. Well, at least continue another project. I've already started it. And uh, love to always bring you along for the process. First timers, if you're first time watching, love to know that. Always exciting to have you share or holler at a friend and say, come watch. And uh, as I mentioned in my comments, always uh, appreciate you bookmarking my link and checking out the Dixie Bell products there. Tonight's going to be a, a fun project because we have a lot to do and I'm making it up as I go. I have an idea, kind of looked around, thought, well, let's try that, try this. And we're going to do just that. So this one did need a little bit of work. In fact, I did sand the top down. I'll plan on staining that probably with Voodoo gel stain like I've done the last couple desks. And uh, I am going to be, and then I did a little patching here and there, cleaned it, and then used gray, Dixie Bell's gray boss. I have already painted part of it green just because I wanted to have some areas a little bit further along. And then I left some areas with boss just to sh show you the basics from taking it from boss to where we're going. So kind of a few steps, but everything else, I think other than this section right here, everything else has already been painted. Now I will tell you that I can't tell you exactly the mixture combination for this color. I did not have a dark enough green for what I wanted to do, so I just mixed one. I started with evergreen, Let's see if that'll pick evergreen. And then I thought, well, let's darken it up, but I didn't want to darken with black and I wanted to keep some blue in it and green has blue in it. So I chose to use Midnight Sky. I would probably guess that I did about three parts evergreen and one part Midnight Sky. Again, that's a guess as I would recommend they just mix it up, maybe use a measuring cup, but I pretty much just emptied out an old container of evergreen and then added some, some midnight sky and it gave me a really nice dark, darker green and I, I think it's looking really nice. It's going to be just a good base for what we're doing. I'm going to be plan. my current plan is to kind of do a layer gradation, not blended per se, but just layers of color from a dark to light. I pulled out, so we'll use evergreen straight up, probably over the darker mixture. And then I also have farmhouse green. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the midnight sky for some darkening and shading. So you can see how all the colors are just gonna work out together. Right. So tonight I, well, let me just show you. I wanted to have a container and so I just poured my paint in this container and then I tonight after I used part of it, I put it in, down in there. I didn't 100% thoroughly mix it because this is just a base coat. It's not the finished, finished color and I'm not planning on using this mixture as a, as a final coat. It's just a nice way, to be honest with you, sometimes it's a nice way to finish out a couple things of color. You know, you've got a little bit of this color, a little bit of that color, just mix them together. Because sometimes, for example, if I were painting evergreen, I could just use this mixture and then put evergreen over it. You know, chalk paint, because you're normally doing oftentimes two colors, it's just a great way to uh, 
to use up some paint, but I did want a darker green and I didn't have the darker green. I've since put it on my list to order some, but for the most part, I think it looks really nice. I'm trying to see if my camera, there we go. And so what I need to do at this point is put it on there. The paint I have is a little thicker mainly because it's been around a little bit, so it's a little drier. You can always mix a little bit of water in your chalk paint and that'll, but I'm just using my Mr. Bottle to, to loosen it up and that's doing quite well. I'm not sure how in the world I came across green sometimes. If you're like me, I just get on Pinterest and randomly just start scrolling. And if some, something catches my eye, I'm like, you know what? That's gonna be it, let's just do that. And that's kind of where I, I haven't done green very often. So that's where, that's where I'm at. Just to give you some of the craziness that rolls around in my head. I'm taking a decent amount of chance on this one, but that's where we are. Sometimes I'm painting based on let's not paint what I do a lot or what the piece needs. Maybe I paint green just so that the next piece I'm excited about because it, it won't be green. I really did think about gray, cream, you know, keeping it simple, but and I just, I think part of me just hates to blend in too much, blend into the crowd. Of... The Dixie Bell's Tropical Leaves but since I'd put a transfer on my last desk, I really didn't want to do it again. I didn't want to have two desks with transfers on it, so I kind of vetoed that idea. But I think it would look good on this, uh, this desk. I just, again, just came off another desk with a transfer, so I need to kind of not overdo it in that realm. I'm very happy with the fact that for the most part, I mix perfect amount of color and I should have enough in here where if I need to kind of uh, dip my brush in the container just to get a little bit of extra, I'll have it. So that's good because I actually don't, I actually do want to have this color play in as one of the layers, meaning I'm going to leave it. And as you can imagine, the colors are, this first coat's very transparent and I don't even mind that. It would not be the first time that I left, uh, what do you call it? First coat paint showing. I have no problem if you're going for a layered look. I'm just looking for spots in this. If you're going for a layered look, I think it's perfectly fine to let the, uh, even the boss show. All right, so that was the first coat. I just wanted to show you how I, how that kind of all went down. So this side and most of the desk, not all of it, most of the desk is already painted. So it's ready for some creativity. And um, I think what I'd like to do is just kind of work our way down. And I'm going to keep these layers fairly loose and I want to say wash based. And I've got a, a slew of brushes and a bucket of water so we'll clean out and use a misting bottle as much as we can. Usually when I'm doing this kind of technique I'm telling everybody that 
you know, you use your colors, you do a layer, don't do a layer, but um, I just like the, the variety and the fun that this kind of technique applies. So the key first is, is getting, getting the color on there. So what I'm going with is light at the top and we're gonna go darker as we move down and then I'll come back later on and accentuate uh, things like the, the inside panel with shading. Uh, probably the closest piece I've done to this technique would be the pair of nightstands that I titled Isaac and Malia. Uh, those use this technique. It took me maybe two or three painting sessions to really find the, the balance of color that I wanted. And I use a rag a lot because sometimes I don't like the drips. I like the, the rag because it gives me the ability to add texture. Give me one second here. See if I can. And you can see how the middle is. I'm putting a little bit of highlight in the middle. The, the thing for me is going for an irregular look. If with this process that we're doing is I have to find a place to transition to the next color. So we'll use this rail or guide or decorative as our kind of our spot to <clears throat> transition. <clears throat> so in order to tr transition then I'm going to put that brush to the side. This is where I'm going to bring up the original farmhouse green, not the mixed one. And I'm going to use the same brush. It really isn't a problem if I just swish it out and get some of that farmhouse green. We'll wet it down. And here's where I'm going to just... As with anything else, this is totally experimental. You won't really know until you start putting color down and you can uh, you'll know or you can tell that I have not none of my panels have already been painted so it's not like I know it's not like I know how this is going to turn out you guys are right here with me right you got my back my rag is actually dry you could do this with a, a wet rag the key here is that I'm removing excess and I'm also adding texture. So it's a two for one combo. Okay, so, so you can see if I adjust this a little bit, how the green is blending into the mixed green. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much the look we want. I will tell you that on the nightstands that I did not long ago, maybe a couple months ago, after I painted things the night in one night, I actually went back and toned it all down with other colors. So that's that's always great to kind of give it some time and see how it looks. Now the next color I have is the midnight sky. Let me just um, switch brushes here. I don't want this dark color in the brush. The this is the flat small. And I did this on the first two colors. I don't want to put dark blue in that brush, even though I'm swishing around. So we're going to leave the original color. That might be a little problematic, to be honest with you. If I'm, I'm technically putting a second coat of paint down, so it's a little problematic to leave the original there. But we're going to go for it for now. So this is Midnight Sky. And I'm doing the same thing I did at the top, but just a thin, I wet the piece first and just applying a darker shade of tone over that. And I'll come up into the mixed color a little bit. Now I can't do drippy too much on this because um, it's the bottom color, but I do want it to be wet and then we can come back. Let's come up a little higher. 
I don't want too much of that originally mixed color to be to be left because I don't want to have to mix more. All right, and then again, as I have been doing, we'll give it a little bit of extra pat to bring in some texture. This could be done with paper. I mean, if you want wrinkles and crinks, you might try some different papers and fabrics. That would be kind of cool. All right. So the top's really bright. That's where I'm saying I might have to, once it's done drying, I may need to do some overlaying. You just don't know how dark these colors are all gonna work together. And I'm looking at my camera there to see what you are all seeing. And I'm just fading that up a little bit. Again, trying to go over the original color some. But I've got drips and things like that happening. And uh, I'm liking, I'm liking the drama. Okay. If you want at this point, you could even take a wet rag like this blue one is, and you can even wipe out and almost like wet this dress. Some of that blue paint, that's kind of cool. Try some up here where I put the farmhouse green. So I'm letting the farmhouse green stay in there. So let's do this. Personally, at least from what I, the vibe I'm going for, the farmhouse green is too bright. So let's. Um, and I don't. I don't really want to spend a lot of time putting a bright color on and then only to come back and have to keep toning it down. So we're gonna do, we're gonna pull out the eraser on our pencil here. It might be okay for some, but I, I don't want that bright of a color. And since it's still thin and a little bit, of, little bit wet, Let's wipe that off. Okay, so we're gonna try mint julep. Yeah, mint julep. So I, I set aside farmhouse green, it, although it's a nice color and all, I think it's a little too bright. Not that this one isn't bright, but just wasn't quite getting me what I needed. Okay. And I think that's gonna, Try a little darker and give me a little bit more of what I need. And let's give it a little bit extra water. I think it's okay if that drips a little bit. I don't want hard lines. That's why I do a lot of the padding and things like that. Taking some of the color off. And when you do this, what I'm doing right now, if you just go back and give it a little bit of a mist, It'll soften, oftentimes soften that, even the fabric touch that I did. I just don't want this to be too bright. I do want the eyes to move up, but I don't want it to be. And this may require a whole nother wash when I get the whole piece done, but for now I think I feel a little bit better about that. Okay, so let's kind of, um, repeat the other side to kind of make sure that our process is totally working right. <clears throat> Water, mint julep. Now don't get me wrong, the other side is gonna have a little bit of farmhouse green in a couple areas, but they're on totally opposite sides of this piece, so I think it's okay. Nobody's gonna judge me for that. Gotta find that balance of water and paint and dabbing and all that kind of stuff. If you did not use water and a, a rag, you could just go and stop with the wash. Let the wash just happen. In other words, you can keep coming in here even with like a spray bottle and really squirt it down. There's so many variations and options here, right? With my lights on 
and with paint being wet, you don't always know exactly how things are gonna tone down. That's why tomorrow, when I look at it, I'll know for sure if I need to do a wash over it. And sometimes that second wash just helps unify the whole piece together. So there is value in that second, in, in even more washes to, to your work. If you really like a layered look, that's worth giving a try. Okay. As long as it's wet, it's going to cause problems. So. Okay. Just know that there's a lot of texture. Maybe the other side, when it's dry, we'll come back and look at that again. I need to. I have to look at the other side. I forget sometimes how far down I go, you know. But I think that's about close enough. So after a while you start building up color on your rag and you're basically almost painting with your rag too. So that's kind of cool. And this side's gonna look totally different than the other side. So it's best not to stress over trying to make them exactly the same. Using the Dixie Bell Mini right now. I could probably still use a one inch brush here, but I like how I can fade the get the color on there quicker and fade it up into the other section. Okay. Sometimes for me, the hard part at this point is just remembering, like I did, like the other side, for example, I, I wet this dress a little bit around the bottom. So I gotta do that here. And I like how that's peeking through. Maybe get a little texture. So let's go take a quick look to see how the other side's drying. And I think it's coming along. So this is the first side we painted and you can see it's still a little wet. I'll keep an eye on the top. Not 100% convinced it's perfect or not perfect. So we'll just keep going here. I might find tomorrow that it needs to be toned down or brightened up and we have a lot of options, but more than likely I'm, I'm going to try if it all works out, I'll stay within the same color palette, meaning I'll use evergreen to tone down the mint julep. Not that I couldn't do yet another color, but after a while you start having so many colors in your palette and you it gets confusing, you know, like if I was trying to explain you in hindsight what I did, the more colors, the harder it is to keep track of. I kind of feel bad sometimes on these desks like this. Same thing I had with my steampunk desk was I did all this work on the back. You know, I kind of feel like under what the odds is that the next person's actually going to display that use the desk in such a way that you can even see the work I did on the back. So you kind of, you have to decide for yourself if it's worth doing all this work on the back. But to me, if the back, um, what I'm trying to say is if it's a finished piece, then I'm going to paint it. Not all furniture has a back that is finished. But this desk is meant to just be seen from two sides, so that's why I'm painting the back. I normally would not paint both sides of a piece of furniture, but if it has like decorative elements, then it was meant to be two-sided. So I could see someone using this as a welcome desk, maybe in a salon or in a business, like a check-in table. 
it doesn't take a lot of work to do, but I'd rather do that than not paint the side. Now, if it was a commission piece and the person said, hey, will you paint this desk for me? I don't, I'm not planning, then I wouldn't really stress too much about the back. Okay. The concept right now, I think the way I'm painting it is almost thinking of it like a vignette. So take more paint off in the middle, let it be more vignetted on the outside. And then you can also just wet distress it. Just wipe a little bit of that off. I'm not putting a lot of paint, a lot of evergreen back on here. Just want to bring that original color. Not original. This is in the original color, but it's not the original color. It's coming along really well. I really like the um, midnight sky color as the base color. Just really, the, the dark blue just gives it a nice, kind of moody, rich depth to it. that's coming through on the camera I think I think it's looking like it is and you can see on the two different sides just as comparison how that blues giving that that look that I'm going for not much paint on the brush just enough to just a touch Because if you put too much on there, then you're you're going to lose that underlying texture group, and it's hard to lift that paint off when it's really thick too. So don't put too much down. And then I'm spraying it with the Mister bottle so that I can move it around. So these steps are pretty repetitive from the standpoint of getting the paint on and you do have to be a little careful because there is a chance you could pick up some of the other paint but it's going to dry pretty quick just because I'm not putting a lot of paint on but my luck like it tonight I touched the mint julep bottle and got paint in the wrong place so So I'm lifting paint out in this area towards the middle more than I am towards the outside. Okay. Step back. So someone's gonna want have to want green and a little bit of mood to it, and I think that's gonna be cool. Real quick, if I'm if I can, if my camera will do it, it should. I want to make sure that you can see the original. You should be able to see the uh, color or the original. Basically, you're seeing boss and the first wash layer there. Okay.
All right, so for shading wise, I'm gonna, I just gonna grab a small little craft brush and it might be too small. And for this shading, I usually just wet where I'm going to shade. And we'll just get a little, a little bit of paint on there. You put as much, yeah, this is way, way too not enough paint. Really want to get in there. So let's go with the one inch, okay? This might be too much. We'll find out. So just pushing it into the corner. And this shading, I've demonstrated many, many times, but you can do this with whatever color you want. And you can use whatever brush you want. For now, I think I'll just keep going with my, my mini. It's gonna, you, you have to trust that this is gonna look right, but part of the problem you might find is that um, if it's, you know, is it the right color? But I'm using the same color as I did down below, so it's going to tie the piece together. If you want, you can do down, let's miss down there, just a little bit of paint on the one inch brush. And I'm going to put a little bit more down here. I'm just putting more where I think it needs it as far as like, where would it be worn or aged? And anything you don't like, you got a little bit of time, right? Wipe it off. That's the shading we're talking about. And again, for comparison, you can see on the right, it has the shading and on the left does not. I'm kind of digging the shading. If the shading's not dark enough, then switch to something like caviar, which would be your pure black. But in this case, I like the blue. It just helps kind of bring it all together. Just a touch, not a lot of paint on my brush. Just repeating what we did on the other side. If you need to, feel free to get the misting bottle out and give it a little quick mist to keep that. You don't want this to be sticky or dry if you're gonna do this technique. And then I'll use my rag to wipe off any excess, like on the high spots, just because I don't, <clears throat> I don't want the dark color on the outer edge. What do y'all think? That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.